In this video, we're going to take a look at Unit 7, Lesson 4, Practice Problems. So this one says a quadrilateral has given angle measures. Select all measures that would come from a cyclic quadrilateral. Remember that cyclic means that the opposite angles, so the ones not next to each other, will add up to 180. So we're going to be looking at angle A and C to see if they total 180, and then also, whoops, also um, B and D to see if they total 180. So in this case, in this first one, we have angle A is 90 and C is 90. Those total 180, so that's good. B is 90, D is 90, so that's good. So this one is cyclic. In B, angle A is 80, C is 100, so those total 180. B is 80, D is 100, those total 180, so this is cyclic. In C, angle A is 70, and C is 70. 70 plus 70 does not equal 180, so this one is not cyclic. In D, angle A is 60, and C is 120, that equals 180, that's good. B is 50, D is 130, that's 180, so D is good. In E, angle A is 50, C is 120. 50 plus 120 does not equal 180, so this one is not cyclic. Number two says quadrilater quadrilateral ABC is cyclic with the given angle measures. So again, cyclic means that the opposite angles will total 180. So angle C is opposite of 135. So angle C is going to be 180 minus 135, which is 45. And then angle B is across from angle D. So angle D is going to be 180 minus 75. which is 105 degrees. Number three, Lynn is looking at a cyclic quadrilateral. She says she's not convinced that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral will always add up to 180 degrees. For example, in this diagram, suppose we move point, e, point A to a different spot on the circle. She says um, that BCD will stay 100, but angle A would change. So let's take a look um, and see if we agree with her or not. So if we move point A over here, um, then we could connect again the other part of the quadrilateral. So now it would be like this. Um, and the intercepted arc hasn't changed. So it still goes from D all the way over to B. And we know that this arc hasn't changed. So in the first case, it was 160, since this is an inscribed angle times 2. So we will still be taking this same arc B to D and dividing it by 2 to get this angle. So this will still stay 80, even if we change point A anywhere over here. Okay, so if A stays anywhere over here, it will start at D, it will end at B, so it will be half of 180, so it should always stay 80. So I disagree with Lynn. Line AC is tangent to um, circle O, so we know that this angle here is a 90 degree angle. And they tell us that the radius of this circle is three units. So we know this is three and we know this is three. The length of segment AC is 4.5. Find the length of AB. So we are going to want to do um, the Pythagorean theorem here. Looking at this leg, this as the hypotenuse, and this as our other leg. And so we will... Um, just call this whole, we'll solve for this whole segment, AO. So AO squared equals this leg 3 squared plus 4.5 squared. Um, and then, so it's AO squared is equal to 9 plus 20.25. So then we get AO squared is equal to 29.25. 
and then we could square root both sides. Now I notice in the answers, it still just has the square root of 29.25. So I'm not going to type this into my calculator. So this length here is 29.25. So if we want just this part, we're going to have to subtract off that radius. So we're going to do the square root of, whoops, I'm not should say square root of 29.25. Um, and we're going to subtract 3 from that. So just subtract off this radius to get that leftover length. Um, and so this would be square root of 29.25 minus 3. Um, and so if we look at this, the square root of 29 is positive. The 3 is negative. So this one will not work because that's a positive 3. This is only square root of 29.25. This has a negative 3 and a positive root 29.25, so C is our answer. Number 5, um, line PD is tangent to the circle. So PD here is tangent to the circle. The length of PD is 1.2 inches, which they have labeled. They also told us that the radius of this circle is 1, so we know this length is 1, this OC is 1 and OA is 1. The length of AB is 1.7. Han is trying to figure out if C or B is closer to P. He uses Pythagorean theorem to find the length of OP, then subtracts 1 from the length to determine how far C is from P. So this one asks how far is B from P and then which is closer. So let's finish doing what Han um, originally said. So he's using um, this triangle here and doing Pythagorean theorem. So did OP squared equals 1 squared plus 1.2 squared since those are the legs of this triangle. And so OP squared is equal to 1 plus 1.44. So OP is OP squared is equal to 2. Point, um, Four, four. So then we can square root that. And so the square root of 2.44 is 1.56. Um, so that's the length of the hypotenuse here. And then we, we know from O to C is 1, so we'll subtract 1 off of that. And that will give us the length of CP as 0.56. So point, um, C is 0.56 away from P. Then we're going to need to repeat this process um, with this larger triangle here so that we can figure out how far B is from P. So for this one, we'll find AP first. So AP squared is equal to this leg, which is now the diameter. So it's 2 squared um, plus the 1.2 squared. So AP squared is equal to 4 plus 1.44. So AP squared is equal to 5.44. So then again, we will square root that to get that AP is equal to 2.33. And now in this case, um, a to B is 1.7, so we'll subtract 1.7 to figure out um, how long BP actually is. And so then we get BP to be 0.63. So point B is 0.63 away from P, and point C was um, 0.56. <clears throat> so answer to part A was 0.63. And then which point was closer? Um, point C was closer. Number six, in the diagram, the measure of angle ACB is 25 degrees. What is the measure of angle AOB? So we want this one. So the green angle is an inscribed angle because it is touching the edge of the circle and it's made by two cords. So this one is 25 degrees, they told us. 
And then the orange angle is a central angle, which is equal to this arc. And a central angle is formed by two radii. So remember that you get the arc by multiplying um, the inscribed angle by two. So this is 50, it's two times bigger than the inscribed angle. And then the central angle is equal to that arc. So the measure of angle AOB is equal to 50 degrees. Which statement must be true? Um, so let me draw a circle here to help us. So a diameter is a chord. By definition, that is absolutely true because a diameter um, has to go from side to side. So it goes from one side to the next and it has to go through the center. So a diameter is a chord that goes through the center. So this one is true. So that's the answer because it says which statement. So there's only one that must be true, but let's look at the rest just to make sure. Um, so a radius is a chord, false, because a radius goes from center to edge, not all the way across. A chord is a diameter. Well, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, this is a chord that goes through the center. So it is a diameter, but it could just go here. So this is also a chord, so that's false. A central angle's vertex is on the circle. Like we talked about in the last problem, the central angle is formed at the center, so the vertex is on the center, not on the edge. And then number eight, a circle and a line are drawn. So let me draw a circle and a line are drawn. How many intersection points are possible? Circle all answers. So these two are crossing no times, so zero is an option. And we know that tangent means that it crosses at exactly one point, okay? So that can happen. And then it can also cut through the circle and cross at two points, so that can certainly happen. Um, but definitely can't hit at three points or four points. So zero, one, or two would be our options.